Today I wanted to review the investing broker Hargreaves Lansdowne because I think as a platform it's often just overlooked and written off as being an expensive provider when actually I think it's much cheaper and better than people think. To give you some background, I used Hargreaves Lansdowne to build up two ICEs worth over 100,000 until I transferred last year to free trade. I still have a general investment account with them and my lifetime ISA. It was a kind of grass is greener when I moved over to free trade, but honestly now I'm wishing I stuck where I was. I'll discuss that more later in the video. So I'm going to talk about the platform, the pros and cons, and give you my brutally honest opinion about what I think of HL. I did want to quickly mention that HL do give away quite a lot of free guides, which I quite like. I've read most of them and they're free, so why not? I'll link some of the best ones down below for you to grab. Okay, so let's start with who is HL. Hargreaves Lansdowne is the UK's number one platform for private investors. It was founded in 1981 by Peter Hargreaves and Stephen Lansdowne. They started by providing information to clients on unit trusts and tax planning matters, later to open as a fully fledged investment platform. Today, they've been operating for 40 years and look after 120 billion in assets by a whopping 1.6 million clients. They're a secure FTSE 100 listed company, the headquarters is in Bristol, and they employ over 1,700 people. Now this is what I class as one of the best advantages of HL. They're one of the oldest companies here in the UK. You've got AJ Bell, an interactive investor, at around 25 years, Vanguard, of course, is the American company, and IG is probably the lesser known British company. Now, obviously, it depends how patriotic you are and whether you'd rather be with a British founded company, but aside from that, the big benefit here is the fact these companies are dinosaurs. Okay, maybe a more modern dinosaur in that they aren't by any means outdated. But compared to the up and coming startups, these companies have been doing it day in, day out for longer than I'm sure a lot of us have even been alive. Now that's not to say that a new company is particularly bad. You've still got your FCSE protection on cash assets up to 85,000 and your holdings are held separately. But I think with an older company, the likelihood of them hitting a stumbling block or launching a new feature and going bankrupt decreases significantly. Now let's talk about what I miss the most over on HL, which is the customer support. You might think that good customer service is a given. I mean, after all, you're putting thousands maybe tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of pounds on these platforms. So to quickly speak to someone on live chat and get a quick response on a support question or just pick up the phone and call someone should be something that comes as standard, right? Nope. Now HL doesn't offer a live chat feature, which I would like to see, but I think there's a reason for that. Now I'm sure some of you will have had a similar experience. When you chat to someone on live chat, you hop on and ask your question and nine times out of 10, you aren't speaking to the right person. You end up speaking to a low level entry support person and I suppose for good reason. It would end up very expensive and not logical to have someone who could answer a high level finance problem sitting on live chat for 15 minutes while someone asks how to reset their password. So it doesn't really end up feasible for companies to do it. The ones I've seen that do do it aren't really at the right kind of level. But where HL does shine is their ticket response. When you have a question on HL and you send a secure message, sure you will have to usually wait up to 24 hours for a response, but when you get a response, it's not from someone acting like you're their best friend. Hey Chris, how's it hanging? I'm here to help you today. Let's do this. You're more likely to get, hi Mr. Palmer, the solution is X. Now, while normally I hate formal customer support and I want a more friendly experience, heck, I'd rather every support person be a member of the Disney crew, lighting up my day with their magical assistant. But when it comes to my investments, it's actually nice to feel like the person I'm talking to knows more than me. I don't particularly want someone to waste my time with fluff when I've got a problem. I want someone who will solve my problem in a quick and efficient manner. The phone support is also next level. Being able to pick up the phone and quickly speak to someone who will solve your problem is brilliant. The other day I had to transfer some cash credit and within minutes I was passed to the right person who solved my issue. I then got a follow up email to make sure my issue was resolved. Phone support across the board, especially with new 
platforms is pretty much non-existent. And I know why. It's because they either haven't got the infrastructure or the person who would be answering the phone would be so low level, they likely wouldn't have the answer and it would result in a bad customer experience for you. So overall, customer service is a really strong point for Hargreaves. Now let's talk about the not so strong point, the fees. This is where Hargreaves lands down, gets being brutally honest, slaughtered. And while I see it, and I somewhat agree with it, it's pretty unfair. Let me tell you why. Platforms use this as a way to compare themselves as being so much cheaper. Who would use Hargreaves Lansdowne? They're way too expensive. Look at us. So let's compare a typical ISA. And for the sake of ease, let's do Hargreaves Lansdowne versus Free Trade. A typical example companies would use. Now I'm not specifically saying Free Trade do this, but I'm using their fees as an example. HL charges $11.95 per share and 0.45% per month for their management, capped at £45 for the year. They also charge a 1% FX fee on the first 5,000, which scales down when you buy more than that, 0.75, 0.5 and 0.25 respectively. So a typical example would say, if you buy eight shares per month, 100 per time, you'll pay 11.95 times eight, 95 pounds 60 per month, plus eight pound in FX fees, 103 pounds 60, plus your account fee, 107 pounds 35 per month. With us, you'll pay zero times eight to buy. Zero per month, 0.45% this time in FX fees, which is three pounds 60 only £3.60 per month. Anyone would look at this and think it's a no-brainer. Why on earth would I use HL? Well, let's make it a fairer example. Realistically, you aren't going to be buying eight shares per month. 95% of people should just be buying one ETF, an all-world fund. So initially, you will buy that ETF, 11.95 plus stamp duty, etc., as you would on any platform. You don't need to pay the FX fee because it's a UK ETF, and you'll pay your monthly account fee. Let's presume you're after maximum account fee, which you may not be, which is £3.75 per month. Each month you won't pay £11.95 to buy more because you will turn on their regular investor feature. Now this is a really good unique feature of theirs. This is £1.50 each time, once a month. Or if you invest in funds, I'll talk about them more in a minute, it's free. So £11.95 up front and £5.25 per month. In comparison, yes, it's free to buy on the other platform. Again, you'll pay no FX fee. But what they don't mention is you need a premium £9.99 per month plus subscription to buy the fund you want. You might not need that, but depending on what fund you want, maybe you will. Not that I'm white knighting HL and I think they're the bee's knees, but I think it's only fair we do a more honest comparison. There's two things to mention here though. If you buy more shares a lot and you're an active trader or day trader, it isn't the cheapest. If you are, then you probably wouldn't use either of these platforms and you'd be looking at something more advanced like interactive brokers. I'll do a review on those soon. The other point is the FX fee. Yes, the FX fee is classed as expensive, but so is free trade. If you are buying US shares, either one, don't be too bothered about it. I never particularly was or two, you can use something like Stake or Lightyear, which will be way cheaper. I'll link to those down below too. A better strategy in that case would be to hold your US stocks in a regular investing account outside of any of these platforms, or just accept that they're part of your ETFs anyway, like I do. Now, one thing I don't like about HL, which I'd prefer if they'd change, is their fund management fee. This is uncapped and it's separate to their shares and ETFs fee. Now, most of you won't invest in funds anyway, you will likely just use index funds or ETFs, but it's something that's worth bearing in mind. And in comparison, a lot of the free firms actually don't offer funds. Now, something you might think I'm quite weird for is I actually like that it's more expensive and that they charge you more to buy a share. That's kind of weird. The whole purpose of shares is to buy and hold long term. If it's super cheap to buy and sell, you'll buy, swap and change just way more than you should. If you've paid 11.95, it does encourage you to invest more at one time and stick with your decisions. Turn on regular investing to top it up, done. The other reason I like it, ask yourself this question. When have the best things in life ever been free? Your investment account or pension is likely one of the most important things you're ever going to own. Heck, it's likely going to decide when you retire or even afford to do so. So isn't it worth paying a bit more for a good service? I thought this to myself a lot lately. I've got 100,000 in my account and I'm worried about saving two pound per month or if I'm even saving because I'm paying for the plus membership. So 
To be honest, I'd rather pay a little more and get a 10 times better service, not have bugs, have that solid support team in place and a phone number to call. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds quite enticing. The other thing that draws me to HL is the type of accounts. It might sound pretty vain to say this, but the reason I wish I had all of my accounts at HL and I did consider opening my SIP there was the fact they cover pretty much everything. Stocks and shares ISA, fund and share account, self-invested personal pension, you've got lifetime ISA, active saving, junior SIP, junior ISA, and they've also got a cash ISA. It might sound a bit silly, but I pretty much ended up with my accounts everywhere. Vanguard, Free Trade, Lightyear, Stake, the Giro, HL, just to name a few. And with some, I have multiple accounts. The ability to have all of my accounts in one place so I can check them and see them all together as one total amount would be very nice. And it would also feel like things were moving in the right direction. I know in the real world, it makes no difference. I'm looking at my ISA, which I haven't added to yet this year, going nowhere, while my Vanguard's building up nicely each month. It would be nice to see the total stacking up steadily. I think this is a huge selling point for me. They're one of the few providers that offer a lifetime stocks and shares ISA. I know AJ Bell does, but I prefer HL. I'm actually quite surprised there aren't more firms doing it yet. I'm not sure if it's a restriction issue, maybe if the government isn't approving more providers, or it's that they just don't make enough money from it. We'll have to just watch this space to see what happens. Now let's talk about what you can buy on the platform. Hargreaves Lansdowne really shines when it comes to selection of what you can actually buy. I'd be pretty shocked if there was something you couldn't buy. The shares, ETFs, investment trusts, corporate and government bonds, as well as over 3,900 funds. It's hard to get an exact figure. Even when I asked a member of the team, they weren't sure. I'd like to say it has all of them, but I'm pretty sure I'd be proven wrong. I think you'll find pretty much anything you want to buy on there. If you can't find something, you can actually request it and they'll help you buy it. The selection of funds is what attracts a lot of people. While they do typically come with higher fees specific to the fund, a lot of people like them. My favorite being Fundsmith by Terry Smith. I also own Smithson, the investment trust. I wasn't actually able to buy Fundsmith over on free trade and their regular investor charge for funds is actually zero, but they do come with a higher management fee as it scales as your account rises. So you need to bear in mind that 0.45% isn't capped, which isn't astronomical, but it's worth thinking about if you are interested in funds. Remember, ETFs are different. They also have a list of funds called their Wealth Shortlist. This was previously called their Wealth 150 Plus, and well 50 shortlist, which is essentially a collection of the top funds. A very good chart I found on Money to the Masses shows their benchmark performances. As you can see, some of them have outperformed and others have underperformed. In general, I'd recommend you're probably better off sticking to your main ETF or select popular funds like Fundsmith. Now, a very nice type of account they do have is active savings. Their active savings is a really unique concept. Instead of having the hassle of opening and closing bank accounts and moving to find the best rate, they aim to do it for you. You can see the different kind of rates available and how they compare and their lockup periods. 3% if you lock up for two years. I prefer easy access, but it's always an option. Likely not what you're thinking about using Hargreaves for, but it's worth mentioning. Now let's talk about the design, which to me is quite important. HL have both a desktop and an app. Their desktop version is very robust and has some decent features, but design-wise, it's quite lackluster. That might just be me being a picky designer, so do make up your own mind. I would actually say the app is way more impressive. I like their color scheme with a nice green and blue. I'd really like to see them improve the desktop version. Hint, hint, <laughs> if you need a web development company, but the app's very nice to use and I use it regularly. It's secure, I got my Face ID set up. You can see the market at a glance, set up a watch list and see their latest news and market reports, which is a nice feature. Of course, the platform is fully FCSC and FCA compliance with a strong emphasis on security. Now, I'm always hesitant to mention Trustpilot as I don't think it's the most accurate metric, but they do score excellent. 4.3 rating with over 6,300 reviews, which is pretty impressive. So what's my final verdict on Hargreaves Lansdowne? I actually think HAL get far more slack than they deserve. I've been a customer of theirs now for over 14 years, which is crazy to think. I have always received such good customer service and I've never had any issues with them. I've never struggled to buy a share and I've always felt that my money's safe. Yes, they are a bit more expensive than the 
free options, and I say free options, but I do think you get what you pay for. I'd love to see a few more features, maybe like fractional shares and maybe some beginner friendly products to entice the audience of young investors that will probably overlook them and end up in free trade. But maybe they manage so much money that they don't want to compete with that market and they're happy providing a more premium service for people with larger portfolios. And we have to remember that a lot of these free apps are at such an early stage. We need to see what this free model actually means in 10 years time. Will they still exist? Will our money still be safe? Will they even still be free? I'm not too sure. I can certainly imagine there being some kind of transitional period where as people's portfolios grow, they'd consider a more reliable provider. I do think in most cases you do get what you pay for. I hope this has been helpful and has demystified the platform and made you consider it. I'll leave links down below for you guys to check them out in more detail and grab some of those free guides. Let me know which platforms you'd like me to look at next. Interactive Brokers is on my list. Thanks for watching. Check out some more videos and I will see you guys guys over there.